You're listening to The Stephen Toriello Show, building a platform of liberty for people in search of truth with a dash of hope and a life worth living. The Stephen Toriello Show. And now, here's Stephen. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show. As always, thank you for tuning in. Real quick one here. Students are losing job offers over Palestinian support. (laughs) I find this just hilarious. So let's get into this. So a prestigious law firm has reportedly rescinded job offers to three students who had said led groups at elite universities that expressed the support for Palestinian people and blamed Israel for Hamas's deadly October 7th attack. Davis Polk and Wardwell's managing partner, Neil Barr, said in an email to staff that it had rescinded job offers to three law students in leadership positions in Harvard and Columbia University. The views expressed in certain of the statements signed by law school student organizations in recent days are in direct contravention to, of our firm's value system. For this reason, and to ensure we continue to maintain a supportive and inclusive work environment, the student leaders responsible for signing on to these statements are no longer welcome in our firm, and their offers of employment have thus been rescinded. Good. These people are idiots. Our colleges and universities are producing some of the dumbest people this country has ever produced. Period. I mean, we are entering into a stage of this country that is going to be awful because of the morons that these colleges have produced. These kids, we live in such a bad, bad time. And, you know, we all know about the cycle of society where strong men create good times, good times create weak men, weak men create bad times, bad times create strong men that cycle? Well, these are the weak men. Sometimes I can't tell which part of the cycle we are in. Sometimes I feel like it's bad now and that strong men are going to be created and it's going to be creating good times. But then I see stuff like this and it just makes me realize that we have colleges and universities all across the country that are filled with a bunch of morons. And these people are supposed to be the strong men that are creating good times. It's not. I I think it's probably I think it's probably along the lines of my kids' generation, uh, whatever generation that may be, um, because these people in these colleges they are going into every aspect of our country. They're going into our government institutions. They're going into our law firms. They're going into our tech industries. They're going in as CEOs to our Fortune 500 companies. It's going to be bad. It's going to be really, really bad when these morons get into positions of power. It's certainly not going to be good. That's all I got to say. And I also just want to say this, that I think the I think trying to make a moral equivalent out of what Hamas did to Israel and what Israel is now doing to Hamas is it's stupefying. You had a terrorist organization that has been launching missiles and rockets into Israel so much that Israel had to get an Iron Dome, essentially a a air defense system, an air defense missile system, okay, so that they can give their, their residents and give their citizens a peace of mind. And then Hamas goes in and slaughters 13 or 1400 innocent women children, men, for nothing. Not because it was some type of military attack, but because they purposely went in there with the mission of killing as many innocent people as possible. Burning babies, beheading people, blowing people up with grenades, throwing grenades down in bomb shelters with a bunch of kids inside. Like, there is... it's, It's not like Israel is is you know conducting this ground invasion against Gaza for no reason and the moral equivalency is isn't there there is no moral equivalency to what Israel is doing and what Hamas did okay unfortunately 
a very, very large percentage of people voted for Hamas. This is what they voted for. If these people can't realize that they're being held hostage by Hamas and that when Hamas goes and conducts an atrocious act of evil against innocent people and those people aren't going to retaliate, you're going to have some collateral damage. If it was me and I was living with Hamas and I voted for Hamas and I seen them launching rockets and then I watched them go in and slaughter 1,300 people, I'm getting the hell out of there because I know the retaliation's coming. What is Israel supposed to do? What is it supposed to do? And, you know, they sit there and talk about how the Palestinians are hostages of Israel. Well, aren't the Palestinians actually hostages of Hamas? Because doesn't Hamas use them as human shields? Isn't it Hamas that controls the food and the water? Isn't it Hamas that gets the money for infrastructure? And instead of building the infrastructure, they spend it on, on rockets and, and missiles and equipment to kill Jews? They got a water line. They cut up the water line to make missiles and rockets with. So like at some point in time, the Palestinians have to realize that they are being held hostage by these people that are getting them killed, right? I mean, it just makes sense. So no matter how you put this, no matter how any pro-Palestinian, pro-Hamas people want to put this, there is no moral equivalency here. There is no justification for what Hamas did. And now what you have is war. And war is not pretty. It's not. There is a lot of casualties on both sides. There's going to be a lot of innocent people dying. That's what happens when a terrorist group that you voted for goes in and slaughters 1,300 innocent people. So I don't get the justification for this. I don't get how anybody can sit here and call for a ceasefire when you should have been calling for a ceasefire before Hamas started launching attacks on Israel. When you should have called a ceasefire was before Hamas crossed over into Israel and started slaughtering innocent men, women, and children and burning them alive and throwing grenades down in, in bomb shelters and blowing up a bunch of kids. Like, that's when you should have called a ceasefire. You don't get to throw rocks and then hide behind your mommy and then sit there and say, I give in a ceasefire, ceasefire. No, they poked the bear and the bear's coming after them. And if these Palestinians are smart, they would get the hell out of there. And if they're not allowed to leave, then maybe it's not Israel that's the problem. So I totally, I think this is exactly right. I said this the day after this happened, the day that these college university protests, the day that these protests started popping up all across the country and at, at all these colleges and universities, on the very first day, I said there needs to be a list created of every single one of these students that are tearing down hostage posters, every single one of these students that are talking and justifying the slaughter of, of innocent Jews, every single one of the students that are sitting there talking and asking for more blood of Jews, all the racist, anti-Semitic stuff you could possibly think of. Every single one of those students talking like that needs to have their name put on a list and that list needs to be passed out to every single corporation and industry in this country. These people should never, ever be able to work anywhere around anybody again. Ever. Never. I think it's disgusting what these people are doing. We are essentially watching the rise of a new Nazi party. That is essentially what these people are. If you're calling for the death of Jews and you are trying to justify the slaughter of innocent Jews, that is what you call a Nazi. Why? Because Nazis supported the same thing. In fact, it was Nazis, it's only Nazis, that ever supported the death of innocent Jews. And so if you support the death of innocent Jews and you support the, the targeting of Jews, then you are a Nazi in my book. Not in my book, you should be considered a Nazi. I just find it so ironic how out of all the stuff the Democrat Party has done to this country, all the damage, all the lies, all the misrepresentations, it's almost like God is bringing karma. It's almost like God showed the entire world which party is the party of racism. 
which party is actually the party of anti-Semitism. And it's just incredible. You have lawmakers in our government, lawmakers in Congress, that are coming out in support of Hamas. Okay? I get the difference between Palestinian, pro-Palestinian Hamas, but that's not what these protests are about. You have radical sectors of these protests that are chanting death to Jews. Okay? That is not pro-Palestinian. That is pro-Hamas. And if you want to sit there and protest Israel from going in and carpet bombing Gaza to eradicate Hamas, I understand. But you have to understand it's probably your protests are probably going to be falling on deaf ears. Because what you should have been doing is you should have been, I don't know, Hamas, it's probably not a good idea that you go in and slaughter 1,300 people. I just can't stand how the pro-Palestinians are trying to find a moral equivalent in all this. There is no moral equivalent here. What Hamas did was evil. What Israel is doing is retaliating and eradicating the enemy that wants to destroy them. That is no different than my neighbor coming over here, beating up my family and taking my kids hostage, and then me not going over to my neighbor's house to go eradicate him. So that it can never happen again. It is, I mean, it's, this is the moral equivalent we're talking about. And this is actually way worse than that. Because you're talking about 1,300 innocent people that couldn't fight back. Children shot, beheaded, burned alive, blown up with grenades. Women raped until they were dead. Men with their heads chopped off. I mean, this, and, and, and when you go in there and your, your direct mission is not to go after Israeli forces, not to go after IDF camps. They actually passed military bases so that they can purposely go in to slaughter innocent people. There is no moral equivalent here, folks. I am sorry. And so, yes, I support what, it, what Israel's doing. And it's a shame. And it's, it is a shame that the Biden administration has sent a general over to Israel to prevent Israel from doing what they need to get done. And that is eradicating Hamas. That's what those carriers are there for. That's what that general's over there for. Not to help Israel, but to restrain Israel. And if Israel was smart, they would distance themselves as far away from the Biden administration as possible. Why? Because Joe Biden has been wrong on every single foreign policy his entire career. I wouldn't want Joe Biden anywhere near any foreign policy decision. In fact, Joe Biden is so wrong that I would actually ask him what he would do and then do the opposite. And then you would probably have a higher rate of success. That's how bad Joe Biden is. And so I just think it's just, first of all, we all need to remember why we're even here. Three years ago, there was peace and prosperity in this world. And I guarantee you that all the people and citizens of these countries wish Joe Biden didn't win that election. Because of Joe Biden winning that election, if you want to call it that, because of the media and the administrative state and the Washington establishment rigging the election and getting Joe Biden across the finish line, it has caused death and destruction across the globe. Joe Biden is a danger to this country. Joe Biden is a threat to humanity itself. The man is a walking pandemic, a human wrecking ball. Okay? I would want Joe Biden as far away from this situation as possible. And this is exactly why people need to rethink come the next year and a half as we're walking into World War III because of Joe Biden. Mind you, we had peace and prosperity throughout the entire Trump administration. Six months into the Biden administration, here we are on the brink of World War III. So I would think really careful if you want the guy that has been proven to be wrong on every single major foreign policy his entire career, being the leader that leads you into World War III, okay? People really need to think really hard on that because I find that to be actually quite terrifying. I wouldn't even trust Joe Biden to run a lemonade stand. And anybody listening to this, any business owner, anybody would agree with me. Not one person listening to this show listening to the words coming out of my mouth that owns their own business, would ever, ever let Joe Biden anywhere near their business. 
So the whole fact that Joe Biden and the Biden administration is is trying to restrain Israel from getting done what it needs to get done so that that country can live a peaceful and prosperous life is just disgusting to me. And it and it should show every single Jew in this country which party supports who the Jewish people need to realize because Jews have always voted majority for Democrat, always. The Democrats get overwhelming support from the Jewish community. Overwhelming. In fact, I think 90% of their donations are from the Jewish community. Well, that's all about ready to change, folks. Because the Jewish people are finally starting to see which party has their back and which party doesn't. So Joe Biden is trying to play both sides here, and it's not going to work. Okay, Joe Biden may be a sick, corrupt chameleon, and he may have been a chameleon his entire career, but this is one of those situations that that he's not going to be able to pull off. He's not going to be able to do it, and that's exactly what he's trying to do. He's trying to play both sides. Mind you, Joe Biden doesn't give a flying rip about anybody but himself and getting reelected. Joe Biden does not care about the Jews. He does not care about the Palestinians, okay? I think it's, we need to get that clear right here, right now. Joe Biden cares about Joe Biden, Joe Biden's money, and Joe Biden's career. That is it. So by him going over there trying to restrain Israel is him trying to keep his voters, his support for Palestine, for the Palestinians. All right? But by him going over there and restraining Israel, he is showing the Jewish community exactly who he is and exactly who he supports. Okay, the Jewish people want Hamas eradicated, period. And by Joe Biden stopping that and preventing Israel from doing their job and doing what they need to do, the Jewish people are done. They're starting to see who their real allies are. And I'm telling you right now, it's not the Democrat Party, and it never has been. And I guess it's better late than never, but it's about time that the Jewish community starts to see which party actually has their back. When you have a Democrat Party, when you have a political party, where six, seven, eight members of that party will not condemn Hamas, that, si- that should send a pretty big signal to the Jewish community, like which side they support. You had one Republican, and I can't believe who it is, Thomas Massey. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know what principle, I, I, like, I don't understand it. How can you have an entire party, but one Republican doesn't condemn Hamas? What is the point in that? And that's the same. It's, it's Rand Paul, too. I get it. They're anti-war. They're, they're not going to condemn either side. I get it. You stand on your principles. But, dude, can you please do us a damn favor for once and stick with the damn party? Can the Republicans agree on anything? The Republican Party can't even agree on condemning Hamas, a terrorist organization. I mean, come on, man. But you have like eight, I don't know how many Democrats, and that's just the eight that they publicly won't condemn Hamas. Think about all the Democrats that won't come out publicly and condemn Hamas, but actually, in a way, actually support what Hamas did. Well, I'm telling you, the, anti, the Democrat Party has a real anti-Semitism problem, a real, real problem with anti-Semitism. And I just find it so rich and maybe even a blessing from God that this turned out the way that it did a year and a half, 13 months before an election. It is weird. I'm telling you, God works in really mysterious ways, man. And it's almost like him coming down and just shining light on the Democrat Party and just how racist that party is. The Democrat Party is and always has been the party of racism. From the Civil War, from Jim Crow, the KKK, all the way up to anti-civil rights and pro-segregation. The Democrat Party has always been the party of racism. They just changed their tactics, that's all. They haven't changed their tune, they just changed their tactics, that is it. So apparently there's going to be a lot of college students not getting their elite jobs when they get out of college. But not because they're complete morons. And they shouldn't be getting these jobs anyway. I can, I, can name, I can name 10 people off the top of my head that would deserve these jobs and would do better in these jobs than these morons coming out of these colleges and universities. So they're not getting the jobs not because they're morons, but because they won't condemn Hamas and they actually support and justify what Hamas did to the innocent Jews. They're, they're Jew haters. 
And I don't think Jew haters have any role in this society. Any role. Democrats are perfectly fine. They'll hire all the anti-Semites they want. They don't mind them. In fact, they probably actually share common values with them. So the Democrat Party would never, ever come out and say this. But you know what's crazy is that all the donations for the Democrat Party, a lot of it comes from the Jewish community. And the Jewish community is saying, nope, no more. As of right now, there's been like 7,700 casualties in the Gaza Strip, in the, in the territory. Uh, that's probably going to be expected to go up because it is a full-blown ground assault on the Gaza Strip. And that's exactly what needs to be done, despite the Biden administration trying to hinder Israel from going in and doing what they need to get done. Like, this is the United States military and the, the Biden administration specifically would be the last people I would want to take advice from. Take it from a country that spent 20 years in a war and then hightailed it out of there while leaving $85 billion of weapons and equipment. Like, who the hell would want to listen to that military strategist? I sure in the hell wouldn't. No, Israel is doing exactly what Israel needs to do. Go in there, eradicate these people, and give peace and prosperity back to the Palestinian people. The Palestinians are not being held hostage by Israel. The Palestinians are being held the Palestinians are being held hostage by Hamas. Okay, I think we need to realize that why? Because Hamas is using them as human shields. This is why they launch rockets from schools and hospitals. Okay? So and if the Hamas actually cared about its people, then instead of cutting up the water lines and turning them into rockets, they would actually keep the water lines there so that their people could drink water and would have fresh, clean water to drink. All right. There's a lot of stuff coming out. It is clear and obvious which side the, the radical prov the media supports. It is disgusting, disgusting how we have a media that is so anti-Semitic. But we all knew it. The Republicans, conservatives such as myself, we all knew that the Democrat Party and their administrative state media were anti-Semites. The entire damn flock of them is is anti-Semitic. The whole damn thing. Not one of these people at MSNBC, Joe and Mika, any of these anchors on any of these left wing outlets resigned in protest for the attacks that Hamas did to Israel or not one of them apologized. Did any of them apologize? for trying to essentially start World War III by putting the blame on Israel. And this is nonstop. Every single day, their support for Hamas is deafening. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to get on here real quick. Quick rant. I was just reading through this article. I seen that the college students aren't getting jobs because of their support for Hamas. And I think that's exactly what needs to happen. Unfortunately, it's not doing a damn thing. Have you guys been watching the videos of the protests happening across the entire world? It is insane how many Palestinians and who knows, maybe even radical Muslims are out here that are in this country that have we have been infiltrated, ladies and gentlemen, infiltrated. Because of open damn borders, because of a broken immigration policy and because of the Biden administration. So look. Things are going to start getting more and more rowdy once we start getting uh, photos and videos coming out of Gaza, the carnage, destruction, everything that's going to be coming out of there for the next few weeks. It's going to get wild. All these protests are going to get more amped up, more radical, more intense. So remember, keep it clear head, keep your head on a swivel, and just remember to always trust but verify. Sometimes it could be hard to see clearly in the fog of war. So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you for tuning in. I will leave this article, and I have another article I didn't have a chance to read. I'll leave both of them in my podcast description. You guys go ahead, take a look at those. The first article I was reading, it goes on for quite some time. It was a pretty big article, but it was a little older. It was, it's been a couple days since this happened, um, but I will leave it in my podcast description anyways. And these college students shouldn't be getting a job. We don't need a bunch of anti-Semites working around our country. So that to me is unacceptable. So again, I'll leave those articles in my podcast description. If you guys want to go ahead and read them, make sure you do that. Also, if you want to get a hold of me, Stephen Torriello Show at gmail.com. And I hope you guys had a good Monday back at work. Here we are. 
cranking out another week, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to be releasing another show. I'm working on a show right now. I'm going to be releasing it here in a little bit. So I just want you guys to have a good day. Have a good week. God bless you. God bless America. You guys have a good day. Bye-bye.